Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel Step by Step. In the concept 10 series of deflected shape, we saw what are all the rules and steps that need to be taken care while making the deflected shape of beams and frames. And today I am going to start the concept 11 for the series of truss structures and its analysis. And in today's video, we will cover all the basic things related to the truss structures. Before moving ahead, I would like to thank everyone those who have connected with our channel for showing your support. We will continue to make such kind of animated videos for you. And those who are new in this channel, just hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon to get the continuous conceptual animated videos like this. So let's start with the basic definition of the truss. What is truss? Truss is the structure member joined together at the end and it is primarily designed to take the axial loads. And axial load can be anything either in tension or in compression. But have you ever thought what is the need of truss? We have a beam also. Can we provide beam everywhere in any structures? Let's discuss this in two simple topics. So, the first point is that if you have two support and the support ke beach ka jo distance is 2 meters, then what will you do? You will provide a beam. Okay. And what if this support uh, distance is increasing? Like uh, if you have a support distance now of 8 meter or 10 meter, then still you can think uh, to provide the beam with a greater depth. But if this support distance is of 20 meter, 30 meter, then what we will do? Here, instead of beam of a greater depth, if you provide a truss, then it will be a better option in both economic point of view as well as structural point of view. And the second important point is that in beams, only the top fibers, that is extreme fibers, are stressed fully. But the inner fiber don't get that much stresses. But instead of this, if you provide the truss system, then we design the truss system for the axial loaded. It means due to the axial load, the whole structural member gets fully stretched and perfectly utilized. Hence, the truss system becomes more economical than the beam. But there are few assumptions that we have to consider in the truss structure while analyzing it. The first assumption is that the members of the truss structure is perfectly straight. It means only the axial force is acting on the structural member. But in practical, if you see this, it is not always possible. There is some side imperfection due to which the bending moment may also arise. But this bending moment can be neglected since its magnitude may be very small. So during the analysis, we neglect the bending moment over the truss structures. Hence, we assume that, that any of the truss member is having only axial force. And the second assumption is that the load must be acting at the joint. Agar kisi truss ke structure elements mein koi bhi load transversely act ho rahe uske mid span mein, not at the joint, then wo as a truss structure nahi kehlaega. Then it will behave as a beam. So for the truss analysis, it is very important that all the load must be applied on the joint. Now we will talk about the stability of truss. Which arrangement of the truss members will you say that it is a stable truss structure? Before that, let's recall one small concept of determinacy of truss system. If we are able to find all the forces over the truss member of the structure, then that structure is a determinate structure. So, you, with the help of this, we can create one small equation that is total number of members plus the number of external reactions. If the sum of this is equal to the number of available equations, then this is called as a determinate truss. It means M plus number of reactions equal to two times of joint. At each joint, we have two number of equilibrium equations. Hence, with this equation, we can find the determinacy of this truss structure. 
so in this equation if m plus r is greater than 2 times of j then this structure is a indeterminate structure and if m plus r is less than 2 times of j then it is a unstable structure but there is one concept if the structure is determinate or in indeterminate then also it might be possible that it becomes unstable so yahan pe agar hame pata lagana hai ki structure unstable hai ya stable hai to pehle hum structure ko do part mein categorize kar dete hain first is external second internal external mein agar hamare paas sare support reactions kisi ek point se pass ho rahe hain then that structure is unstable structure एंड अगर सारे सपोर्ट रिएक्शन एक दूसरे के पैरल हैं देन दैट इज ऑल्सो द केस वेन द स्ट्रक्चर इज एक्सटर्नली अनस्टेबल एंड अगर हमें इंटरनल इनस्टेबिलिटी फाइंड करना है तो सबसे पहले हमें ये देखना पड़ेगा कि सारे मेम्बर्स का अरेंजमेंट कैसा है अगर सारे मेम्बर्स में एक कॉमन फॉर्म है ट्राइंगुलर फॉर्म देन इट इज़ अ स्टेबल स्ट्रक्चर बिकॉज ट्राइंगुलर फॉर्म ऑफ इज अ मोस्ट बेसिक फॉर्म ऑफ द ट्रस स्ट्रक्चर If we consider one example, then here you can see the most basic form of this arrangement is a triangular form. And in the second example, if we see that one member is shifted to the right of the bay, then this structure cannot be a stable structure because at the center, no one is going to restrict the joint motion. Hence, this structure is unstable structure. Hence, to find the internal instability. you can just see just check that if the triangular form is not maintained in any structure then that is a unstable structure so friends these are all the basic concepts related to the truss elements in the next upcoming video we will discuss the method of analysis of truss statically determinate truss systems we will use this method to analyze the simple roof truss model step by step So stay tuned with us we will see you in the next video